Are you frustrated with poorly fitting and unattractive dentures? This video will guide you through the entire process of creating the perfect denture. Create excellent suction with intra-all scanning tricks and flawless occlusion with Morja 4D jaw tracking. Learn tips and tricks from the experts in clinical workflows to elevate your denture fabrication skills. A special thanks to Dr. Kakaros Porter in Woodhaven, Michigan. Let's dive in. This is going to be a Amazing. All right, so what we got here today is we have a top denture and then we have a bottom cast metal partial. We're going to get started. We're going to get started in the front here. And we always scan the occlusal or incisal portion first. It's very important when you're scanning edentulous areas to make sure that we're scanning a certain path the scanner knows how to reference. The other thing that's really important is the buccal tissue stay still and then we capture it in one pass so we have a really nice vestibule. Now here I prefer to scan the lingual first because the buckle is so technique sensitive. So I'm going to wrap around the lingual. I'm going to use a scanner to push the tongue out of the way and I'm going to make sure I scan all of the attached tissue as far down as his floor of the mouth allows. Now we have the patient's old denture and we're going to use this to make his new denture. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some tray adhesive, put it on the intaglio and a little bit on the outside. We're going to use this as an impression tray. I'll show you how to scan this and then from that we'll do the rest of the motions. I don't brush it in with a brush because it'll contain it the whole bottle. Now you'll, you'll see this, this, I have to thin this out significantly. The other thing that you have to see here, Carson, is that this flange is really thick. I will thin the flange down in the final. A really important step here is that we have to dry this. If, you're if your tray adhesive isn't dry, it actually acts as a separating compound. So we want to make sure we give this enough time so this gets nice and tacky on us so it does, it holds. I really appreciated the tip about thoroughly drying the tray adhesive as it is a common question from clients. In this video, Dr. Kakaris uses Denmark's light body and fills it in a steady motion to avoid bubbles. He carefully pauses when resetting the dispenser gun's trigger. Then he quickly places the denture into the patient's mouth, ensuring it's fully seated. A good practice is to have the patient bite down gently to achieve occlusion without dislocating the denture. Press down with two fingers on the teeth and onto the palate for proper seating. So now we have our denture impression. So we need to trim off the excess material. So we've got a 15 blade here, nice and sharp. Remember, anything that moves will distort. This is a common mistake I see in many scans. Excess loose material tends to move around during the scanning process, causing distortion. it in the first place it starts. So it's it's important to scan the intaglio first, then to scan the occlusal. Although it is easier to start with the occlusal, the accuracy is greater here, so we start here. So we're gonna start on the posterior tuberosity area, and we're gonna scan the flange and a little bit of the intaglio. And we always, always let the scanner see a known area. Now we're going to scan the inside. Now this is an important, a, a important area to scan correctly to always have a known area so it doesn't it stitches so it stitches appropriately. Now that we're satisfied with the intaglio, we're going to scan the outside. Again, starting here, making sure that the scanner can see a little bit of the buckle, but also can see the height of the vestibule where the scanner knows where it's at. And we're gonna make our way down the buckle. Same thing, giving the scanner a known area. Now we're down to the teeth. We're gonna rotate down to the teeth, same thing, giving the scanner a known area. Now we're gonna scan the teeth. We're gonna scan the palate. Now, same thing, we're gonna follow the same pattern. So the scanner knows where it's at. Palette is not absolutely necessary to scan. The lab can fabricate a denture without this part. And this part can actually be one of the hardest to scan due to its reflectivity. I'm going to scan the 
intraorally of the edentulous area and you can pin your scans together depending on how you feel about this. So here we start in the most posterior area. Now what I typically do is I capture a little bit of or the, the tuberosity in the beginning and I'm going to go around I often use two fingers here to help retract the cheek out of the way. Use an obturator or a tracker as well. I'm going to go all the way around get to the other tuberosity close a little bit for me close sometimes it is helpful to have the patient close a little bit so that you can capture that tuberosity area then scan the palate same thing we we'll want to give the scanner a known area Scanning the edentulous area is completely optional in this case. And we scan, we want to scan from the first molar to the canine at the very least, going up and down. For accurate bite scanning, dry teeth are essential. Always compare the bite scan results with the patient's natural bite. Files in the manja, and we want to look at the inside here, and we want to make sure that there's no intersections where the upper jaw cuts into the three space at the bottom jaw and there is not so we accept accept now we need to select our points so we want to select something concave so our, our stylus has somewhere to find this point that point we do want our bases to be about one premolar apart now we pick our inter incisal point this point is entirely arbitrary it just gives the it gives you a reference point for your axiography. Okay. Now we have to calibrate our tiara. So now we're going to calibrate our tiara. We're going to show the camera both the stylus and the tiara. We're going to hold it still for three seconds. Once it's, and then we're going to make large circles with it, making sure it stays within view of the manjo. Now we go ahead and place this on its head. We want this to be right above the nose, nice and straight. And then we tighten it to the first tier. Now we're going to attach our fork. What people don't understand is that you can bend this, okay? So this is made from flexible material. We may not use this entire amount, but we can bend this to customize to his teeth. So we're gonna measure. So you can see there's a space there, so we wanna correct that so he can we can fit it to his arch much better. And then we can really cut it to about here and on this side about the same. Twist this off. Twist this off. We're using a rigid bisacryl material. You cannot use silicone in these cases. We do want to make sure we place it down low to both engage the embrasure space but also not to interfere with the path of occlusion. Normally we have the patient bite down, but we took his denture out so we can put the obturator in. This part here is going to interfere. We didn't quite place it entirely as we planned, so we're going to go ahead and just going to go ahead and remove this very gently with a burr. This is like the most nerve-wracking part here. And then this is important. You put your finger here, you hold this, and then you attach this fork. Open baker. <laughs> Okay, bite down, gently. So you see no interference is now plan of occlusion. So now we want to give this about 80 centimeters away from the patient. It'll tell us when we're appropriate. Right about there, and we want to twist it. Once we do that, we're gonna lock two of these. So now this does not move. If this camera moves, then everything is inaccurate. Now we've got to look at the cutaneous reference points. All right, so now we're gonna locate the condyles and the subnasal point. So I'm going to ask the patient to open, open, close, open. And we want to open big here. We want to put it inside touching the cavity, not so much the condyle. Now we're going to pick this subnasal. Now we're going to do the intraoral reference point. So we have the one, we'll turn it towards the camera. So we have our green picking precision, which means that we are accurate to 50 microns or less. So we are, go ahead, we are ready to record. So now we are live. Go ahead and open close. So we are live and this is the patient's motion we have here. So now we're going to select a number of motions. And these are customizable to how you prefer. 
Motion records can be imported into ExoCAD and only a few specific motions are needed to achieve the best results in your restorations. While open and closed motions are not as crucial, lateral motions to the left and right are extremely important. Later, I will demonstrate how to crop these files. Another valuable record is the actual chewing motion. To capture this, Dr. Kakaris has a patient chew on a cotton strip. The software can then crop the most repeatable parts, recording only from the ICP to 0.5 mm before the edge to edge by. Any additional information can distort the restoration and cause excessive trimming during the motion path. In ExoCAD, I imported a reposed full face photo to enhance the patient's smile and correct the left canting. Simply copying the denture would have resulted in the same anesthetic appearance. Under jaw movement, I imported the jaw motion file and set the jaw relation position to the reference position, marking the files that Dr. Kakaris cropped. I mainly use the lateral left and right motions as well as protrusion. I automatically apply these motions to the dynamic occlusion under freeform and I can double check the path by manually moving the slider for each jaw motion. Hi guys, today we have our trine, we have our cast metal framework with our teeth set traditionally in wax and we have our 3D printed monolithic trial denture. We're going to go ahead and try in the framework. Otherwise looks pretty good. We have our denture, we're going to go ahead and try this in. Push it up there. Okay, go ahead and bite down for me. Open a little bit. Bite down again. Okay. So, uh, squeeze. Now slide your teeth forward. Go back. Slide your teeth to the left. Go back. Slide your teeth to the right. Go back. And do you like this? Yeah. That was a trying of the denture and the partial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't miss next week's Patreon special where I deliver the final True Dent Denture by Stratasys and feature exclusive interviews with Dr. Kakaris and the patient about the experience with Moja. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get updated on all future videos. I also have a Patreon page where you can support the channel or download useful things like libraries. Until then, Stay tuned. Ah!